Hey guys, how's it going? Lately, I've been seeing a lot of questions on forums and especially on Facebook about these little guys. People are asking whether they're worth using, how to use them and why to use them. So today, I wanted to take a little bit of time to have a quick talk about hydrometers. It just so happens that I really needed to take a gravity reading on the best bitter that I brewed a little while ago. I'll stick a card up top for the video for that. It's been sitting at a stable gravity for a while now and I just want to make sure that I'm not getting any weird surprises and nothing else is going on before I keg it. This kind of made me realize that this seems to be a bit of a topic that a lot of new distillers have a bit of trouble with. So I figured today I'm going to go through a few things about hydrometers. Today I'm using a hydrometer to see whether or not fermentation is totally finished, but you can also use them to ascertain the amount of sugar in your initial mash or wash. And you can also use the original gravity before fermentation and the final gravity after fermentation to work out your ABV. For a lot of people, the best tool to do that is a hydrometer. I think it's worth noting real quick that for distilling there's kind of two ranges when it comes to hydrometers. The first is sub one or lighter than water and that is going to be used for your finished product or the product coming off the still. The second is one and above or heavier than water. That's going to be used for everything before distilling. Obviously to be able to use one you need to get your hands on one first and I've seen a lot of people asking which ones are best to buy. I figure that might be a good place to start, so I'll tell you what I think and what I suggest. These little guys used to be really expensive. Luckily for us, the prices have plummeted in the last 10 years, I guess. I guess mostly due to cheap internet sales, and in my experience, honestly, they're pretty reliable. They're pretty decent, the cheap ones. I wouldn't suggest going insanely cheap, but I do think that the lower end of the price range kind of offers the best value for money. If you're just kind of wanting to test the waters with hydrometers and see if they're right for you, I would suggest getting a relatively cheap brewer's hydrometer. These guys give you three different scales, specific gravity, bricks, and alcohol potential. They also give you a pretty big range of gravity that it'll test in one instrument which is kind of nice if you just want to try it out. This specific one, and I'll link one down below as well, I'll drop a link, uh, runs from 0.99 uh, down to 1.16. And that's gonna cover you for most things you wanna do, especially if you just wanna get used to using one and see if it's right for you. The downside to these guys is that that entire range is crammed into this little space, which means that every increment on that scale is very small and if you've got bad eyes or you want to be super accurate you may not find that satisfactory. On the other hand if you just kind of want to jump straight in the deep end maybe you've got bad eyes or you just like the idea of being super accurate I'd probably suggest getting a set of precision hydrometers. Precision hydrometers split that full range up and put a smaller piece of that range onto each individual hydrometer. That allows the increments that you read to be larger. That allows it to be a lot easier to actually physically see what you're reading and also to be more accurate. The set that I've got here is actually insanely cheap. It was, I think, $13 for all three. To be honest, I, I can't in good faith recommend these. The paper that the increments are, and the scale is written on is a little bit shoddy. It doesn't line up, it's not horizontal, it kind of overlaps in slightly funny ways. My friend does have a set of these on the other hand, and I can totally recommend them. They're still on the cheaper end, I think they're about $49 at the moment on Amazon, and they are pretty decent for the price you're paying. Sometimes you can easily pay like $400 for a set of these. Next, you're gonna need something to actually test your samples in. And seeing as distillers tend to deal with really high ABV liquids, I tend to suggest going glass rather than plastic. I'm still using a plastic one. For brewers, this is no problem. I mean, maybe 12% goes into here and anything that goes in here gets thrown away for brewers. We never, like very few brewers will keep this and put it back into the fermenter or the keg. 
Ideally, you're going to want a container that is see-through, so you can see the hydrometer through it, that is large enough to physically float the hydrometer in it unobstructed, but small enough that you're not taking crazy large samples. So I've had a bit of a look around, and I think these are pretty much perfect for what I need. I think I'm gonna be buying one of these pretty soon, as soon as I'm up and running. I'll drop a link for those down below as well. On the other hand, I think for distilling, it's a much more viable option just to drop your hydrometer directly into whatever it is you're testing, into the mash, uh, into the fermenter, or into the final product. I, I think maybe that's a little bit more acceptable or a lot more acceptable for distilling. For me, I'm still gonna get glass. I like the usability of it and I like the flexibility of it, but it's up to you. All of this kind of leads to the question of what does a hydrometer actually do? A hydrometer measures the density of a liquid in comparison to water. For brewers and distillers, that can be really helpful. It can tell us how much sugar is in your pre-fermented liquids, your wash, your mash. And then after you've fermented, it can tell you, it can tell you how much sugar's left or how much alcohol is in the liquid. You do need to be aware that as brewers and distillers, we tend to run into the trap of thinking that a hydrometer measures how much sugar is in a liquid. If a hydrometer is giving a higher specific gravity reading on one liquid versus another, then that has to have more sugar in it, right? Just remember that literally anything that is in solution in the liquid that you're reading will affect the reading of the hydrometer. The basics of using these things are act is actually crazy simple. You literally take one, float it in the liquid you want to test, and read the number that is given at the level of the liquid. If, however, you want to make things a little bit more reliable and a little bit more accurate, I've got a few hints and tips for you. Pretty much any hydrometer that's worth owning is going to be calibrated to a specific temperature. That means that that hydrometer is only going to be accurate at that temperature. Normally, for brewing, distilling, winemaking, hydrometers are calibrated to 20 degrees Celsius. So basically, if you wanna be taking accurate readings, you need to be testing a liquid that is at 20 degrees or as close as possible to it. There are charts that will help you convert what reading you get to a more accurate reading based on the temperature difference. Just be aware that the further away you are from that calibrated temperature, the less accurate your reading is going to be even with the use of calibration. There are all sorts of different charts for these. A lot of brewing software or brewing apps will have these charts built in, like Beersmith. You can also find lookup charts or Excel spreadsheets. A hydrometer is also gonna be affected by anything that obstructs its ability to float naturally or freely. So you need to make sure that the hydrometer isn't resting on the bottom of your testing vessel or touching the sides. You also probably wanna make sure that there aren't too many bubbles stuck to the outside of the hydrometer as that can affect its buoyancy as well. One of the easiest ways to combat this is just to give the hydrometer a little spin before you let go and that generally helps to make sure you shake off most of the bubbles. As you will know, fermentation also introduces CO2 into the liquid. If it gets to the point where that beer, brewer's beer or wash is perceptively fizzy, you're probably going to want to degas the sample and the easiest way to do that is literally to tip it between two different containers a couple of times and just off gas as much as you can. Another trap that seems to trip people up when they're new to this is reading the top of the meniscus rather than the bottom. When the liquid comes up and touches the side of the hydrometer, it creates a little curve that sort of reaches up the rest of the glass. You need to make sure that you're reading the scale at the water level, not at the meniscus level. And lastly, it's important to note that if you want an accurate reading the best way to do it is to make sure that your eye is at the level of the liquid you're testing and this ensures that you're reading in parallax you're reading parallel you're not distorting the reading you're getting 
due to your point of view. And lastly, guys, be careful with these things. They are fragile. I know you can get shatterproof hydrometers now. They're not shatterproof, trust me. So to sum up guys, a hydrometer is an awesome tool to take a reading of a specific gravity of a liquid. For brewers and distillers, that can help us know how much sugar or alcohol is in a sample. When you're using them, make sure to be testing your sample at the calibrated temperature of the hydrometer, or at least make sure you're using a lookup table or a conversion chart. Make sure that the hydrometer isn't obscured by anything physically, so it's not touching the sides or the bottom of the jar, and no bubbles are stuck to the outside of it. Make sure your eye is parallel to the water level and you're reading at the bottom of the meniscus, not at the top. Degas any fizzy samples, and importantly, make sure you don't fall into the trap of thinking that these things are built to read sugar. Just a quick note, those links that I've dropped down below are Amazon affiliate links. Basically what that means is if you end up buying something through them, it costs you absolutely nothing. It's exactly the same price as you would get if you just found them on Amazon. Amazon, however, gives me a little kickback for sending you their way. So it's kind of a nice way that you can help support the channel without having to spend any extra money yourself. You may notice that I haven't talked about a hydrometer's strong or weak points in relation to a different tool. I kind of decided that that was a little bit too much for one video. If you wanna see it and you wanna see hydrometer versus refractometer, let me know, I can totally do that as well. So thanks a bunch for hanging out guys, it's always a pleasure. If you have something to add to the discussion, drop a question or what you think is correct down below. Go and check those comments out guys because we're starting to get some really cool extra information and discussions happening down there. If you liked the video, like it. If you really liked it, have a think about subscribing and I'll see you next time. See ya.